Um, good morning. It's a pleasure to me to be talking to you today. My story today is about a successful experience I went through where I was involved with a small R&D project that became a big business opportunity. And that opportunity was materialized in a company called Cryocat Technology. And the purpose of my talk is really to talk to you about the roadmap and the challenges that we faced when we were building that organization. The, uh, I worked for a company, for Cryocat, where I was involved from day zero. We started our small R&D team in a 10 by 10 office at the Hart Institute of Montreal, looking at designing a catheter for cryoablation of cardiac tissues. And I have witnessed this organization going from a small R&D team into a private company, and from a private company into a public company, and from a public company into a global leader in cryoablation. Now, how that global leader in cryoablation and with a world-class manufacturing capability got to where we got. You know, the company had a worldwide distribution capability, hundreds of sites around the world, and the sales that reached close to $40 million before being acquired by one of the major players, which is Medtronic. Now, the question is, we're going to hit the challenges and describe the business issues, but before doing that, I would like to go over the opportunity itself and the innovation. As I said, CryoCat is involved in the development of cryoablation catheters for the treatment of cardiac arrhythmias. When we refer to cardiac arrhythmias, we are referring to abnormal heart rate. And when we are referring to ablation, we are referring to technique to destroy tissues inside the heart to stop the arrhythmias. And since we are calling it cryo, we are using cold to ablate the tissue of the heart. Now, arrhythmia are caused by four sites inside the heart that cause these arrhythmias. And to treat these arrhythmias, physician, they have two options. They give the drugs, or physician use devices, what we call catheter. It's a flexible tube inserted through the femoral vein inside the heart. And they try to locate the spot where they're going to destroy the tissue by looking at the electrical activities on a monitor in front of them. Once they believe that they are on the right spot, they push a button and deliver energy to destroy the tissue under that catheter tip. The technique that did exist and still exists until today is the RF catheter. You can see the RF catheter sitting on... Uh, on the tissue, which is represented with a, a pink, and the red dots are representing the heat in the tissue. RF is delivered, and it heat the tissue, burn the tissue, and destroy it. Where with the cryocatheter, the one we developed, instead of delivering heat, cryo removes heat from the tissue. And because we are removing heat, this is what creates cold. Cold is absence of heat. Now, what's the advantage of using cryo compared to RF? It's a lesion that is very well demarcated compared to the lesion created with radiofrequency, where you can see the energy is very spreaded inside the tissue. And the issue here is, when we are doing ablation near important structure inside the heart, it is very riskier because you can destroy that important structure by mistake if you are very close to it. The other advantage you can see on the picture is the presence of thrombosis on the RF lesion, where it is very minimal on the cryo lesion. And thrombosis, just to remind you, are the main cause for vessel blockage in the brain after the procedure. Now, beyond that major advantage, during the development, we found that we can use with cryo, what we call cryomapping, meaning confirming location of the catheter before even destroying the tissue, which will give us capability really to treat patients like kids where their heart is too small and the catheter really, if you use 
a catheter with large tip, you can destroy quite a large lesion inside the heart. With cryomapping, we convert the technique into a safe technique. What I'm be presenting here is a cell, a cardiac cell that you are seeing under the microscope. We are cooling down the cell, and as you are cooling it down, you can see it does stop the electrical conduction of the cell. And once the cell starts warming up back, the electrical conduction comes back. And this is what we call its reversible uh, condu uh, conduction for the cell using cryo. Now, that technique is great for physician. Again, you know, when he uh, start doing the ablation, position the catheter, look at the ECG. Is he happy? Yes. Confirm his location. If he's okay with that, because he was able to stop the electrical conduction, he can go to colder temperature and destroy the tissue. Now, how that innovation became a real company. I'm going to give you a heads up here. That slide will become crowded. And the intention is not to make you intimidated by the slide, but really to show you how much work went taking a small idea into a real business at the end. What you see on the left side is the different activities that we were involved in when we were building the organization. That became, at the end, different department in the company. You know, talking about regulatory and clinical quality, intellectual property, R&D, operation, marketing and sales, and finance at the end. When we started with the company, the main focus was to do a research and answer scientific questions. And during that phase, this is what we refer to as a concept phase. The biggest question at that time was, can cryo destroy tissues? And this is the main question we're able to, we were trying to resolve using different model, animal study, to prove that. During that phase, the main challenge for the organization was IP, intellectual property, because we were looking to protect our idea during that phase. And for sure, this is what I refer to is selling fish in the sea, because getting money at that stage is very difficult. And you have to give them, you know, it's like selling fish in the sea, you know, you want to buy fish, I can go, you know, get it for you from the sea. Uh, from the concept phase, as we resolve that scientific question, we moved into what we call feasibility phase. Feasibility phase is when scientific questions are answered, and the question today, can we develop a catheter that can create cold, enough cold, in a beating heart? And this is what we refer to feasibility. We do prototypes, we develop our specification for the device, and the supporting uh, department are working on doing animal study, dosing study, for example, for how long we have to cool the tissue to create a lesion, for example. Quality are start involving to develop what we call risk man uh, management, because we need to understand what are the risks of using that technology inside a beating heart, because that is an input for our engineering to develop the safety feature. On the patent, we start filing patents, keep filing patents around the method and the device. Early in the stage in the concept, you develop patents that are very general. Here we start developing patents around the device itself and the design feature of the device. Finance starts using different programs in the uh, government. You know, the R&D tax credit, uh, government program, angel investor try to get the money, but here the, it's become a little bit easier to get the money because you have tangible prototype that does work in front of the investor. Going into development phase, this is where things become a little bit complicated. The engineering team start developing the product because in feasibility, you can design a catheter by taking any tube, with any tip in it, and the handle perhaps has def you know, limited deflection. In development, it's the final product we are developing, meaning we are sitting daily with customer to understand the customer needs, what the customer wants, and coming back and designing exactly the handle the way they want it. Industrial design work, for example. Even looking for different supplier, because you need to address at this stage important matter we have to use supplier that can supply us over the years the material to do the job. In feasibility, we don't do that. We don't care about that. We care about developing a catheter with any tube. The supporting uh, department 
we're focusing on animal studies, feasibility trial, human feasibility trials, quality start dealing, building the ISO system, doing audits in the company. Uh, patent international strategy, looking at international strategy on where we're going to file our patents because at the end it's marketed driven. You don't file patent in countries you don't have enough business because at the end of the day, patent is to sue someone if he's using your technology. Why to file patent if you don't have enough market in it? This is why we develop a strategy based on the market, marketing plan we have. Operation for sure start addressing reliability and manufacturability issues and manufacturing sales start working on conferences, packaging, what are the labeling, all what is related to the device as such. And in finance, we start you know, managing expenses at that time because expenses really become a huge burden on the company. Full operation, we saw our engineering during that phase going from a development team into a sustaining engineering team because at the end of the day, we end up maintaining the device that is sold to the market. Customer, they come back with customer complaint, with feedback. We need to change this, we need to change that. And the company was focused on customer happiness. And this is why the team became at the end a kind of sustaining engineering, supporting these changes. Again, you know, the other supporting Department, we're focusing on the approval of the device because approval happened per country. There is no approval that gives you access to all the country around the world. This is why approval goes as you are launching in different countries. Big clinical trials, mainly for US, and for sure on quality side, GMP, customer complaint management, IP, we start putting some offensive strategy because now we have patents and you need to be sure that you have a strategy on what are the competitors that are affecting your device and your market to start attacking them. On the other side, operation for sure, their main concern, pricing, capacity, supplier. Because supplier is the biggest burden for the organization because your supplier is the one controlling your destiny. If the suppliers cannot give you enough material and reliable material, it does affect you, you, the reliability of the product on the market. Obsolescence of devices. Guess what? We have, like for example, a PC board in the unit, a microcontroller. When we started in 1995 and we start selling after 2000, the PC world is changing almost every six months. And we have always to go and deal with obsolescence of component which is a challenging in the medical world because every time you change even a resistor, you have to go and approve your device and sometimes it does involve to do back and do a clinical trial even. Small resistor sometimes does involve that. Sales and marketing, customer service, call center, distribution, training, you can name it what you want. And in finance, biggest challenge, you know, investors tapping on our door, break-even guys, you know, stock price, why expenses is too high, P&L, and all what you can think about in, in finance. At the same time, we have to, to keep it growing. The company has to keep it growing by developing new devices. And growing meaning going back in the process and designing new stuff in the pipeline. Getting around 2008, the company finished clinical trial, submit in Europe, and we had approval, CE mark approval for many devices. We submitted our files in US. That means the risk for that company became too small. And what we saw is a two offers came on the table to acquire the organization from big players and the board met, we made a decision to sell it to Medtronic. Now, what that acquisition brought to the table? I can tell you it's a very difficult decision because as part of the team that invented that technology, it's really hard to let your baby go. It's like when you have a kid that's 17 years old and he wants to go live by himself. You know, it's very difficult for that decision. But at the end, 
there is big advantage of letting that technology go into a big player like Medtronic, because the product end up in experience hands. These guys, they know how to manufacture the product. They know how to distribute it. They are all over the place, and they can sell it. They can they can support the customers better than what we were doing it at that time. They have international pa patient access because they are presented all over the world, and potential for further innovation. They have the money to do it, and for sure reward for the investor at the end. Now, as a conclusion. And this is my recommendation for people who's going to be involved in innovation, and they are thinking about taking it into a real business opportunity. Prove your concept before you jump into design. Spend time upfront before you spend any penny on it, because you need to understand the scientific questions, the engineering challenges, and your position from intellectual property standpoint. Because you could be developing something that is covered somewhere else, you need to go through that process upfront. Understand your challenges. Again, you know, we did talk about the engineering challenges, because sometimes the technology doesn't exist at this time. And when I refer technology, meaning, you know, we, today we heard about new material or about a new innovation going on. This is what does help you. I want to give you a small example about. It, the challenge. When we started back in 1995, we were working on the, uh, developing that technology, and we used the Freon. And since we are using Freon, the Montreal Treaty did happen in 1995. We discovered that we had to go back and design, de design the system because we were not able to find the Freon an anymore. Protect your design with IP, IP, IP. Have a vision and plan your endpoint. Where are you going to be going at the end? Are you going to sell the company? Are you going to be on yourself selling this your product? Get the right team around you. An idea without a team doesn't worth anything. Your team is the one making the company. Get the right financing for sure, and you have to work hard. And good luck. <laughs>